I made the world's most aggressive bird bidet. But why though? I'll tell you why. Six words. Bird poop. Bird poop. Bird poop. I'm not exaggerating when I say I have thousands of birds on my property. My roof looks like a public restroom at an Oreo eating contest. It's disgusting. I'd like to just kia these birds right off my property, but I'm not fast enough. Also, I don't know karate, but I am a mechanical engineer, so I could make that. Oh yeah, some 3D printing, a little bit of valvage, a microcontroller, all coming together for some long overdue bird justice. What's not to love about this idea? I mean, it's a bird bidet, an avian enema, a feather flusher. Two questions in my mind though. First, can I make these components come together and actually work? And second, will a bird land and actually activate it? To make this work, I'm gonna need a valve, a nozzle, some interrupt sensors. These are the same kind of sensors found on garage doors to keep them from closing on a kid or whatever. A battery, some electronics, and some PVC and a 3D printer. Let's build this. Ooh, I can make it look like a bird. A bird shooting bird. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> okay. A bird shooting bird. Bird, bird. <laughs> <laughs> when I plug this in, we should see some lights come on and I should be able to make this solenoid click. I cannot believe that works. Cannot believe that works. 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 Oh! I'm going to kill myself in this playhouse. It cannot hold my weight. So now I just needed to get the mirror mounted and that is what I would use to mirror the signal from the interrupt sensor back to the receiver. And because this sensor was so hard to line up, I designed and 3D printed this white cone. The idea was that this would redirect the light towards the sensor when it got a little bit off. And then it was back out to testing. I mean, that'll definitely keep birds off the roof but it's not supposed to be squirting water until there's a bird. <laughs> okay. If I'm gonna make this thing work, and that's a big if, I'm gonna to need to solve three problems. First, I need a normally closed valve, not normally open. I don't know how I bought the wrong valve. I don't know why, but I did. And I have to live with that shame. Thankfully, there's an easy solution. Next, I wanna hide the wires and get this thing a little bit more waterproof. This is where the majority of the redesign work was. The bird ended up as two pieces with all the electronics hidden inside. Things got a little bit tight in there, but as I explain here. Not gonna lie, I'm super happy with how this is looking. So clean, no wires. It all worked out great. Lastly, I wanted to get rid of the interrupt sensors. Getting and keeping those aligned was a huge pain. And so I needed to find a new sensor. I did a lot of testing and research and all of it was completely undocumented and disorganized. Also, not on camera. Ultimately, I chose a microwave radar sensor because it can be encased in plastic for water protection while still detecting birds. These sensors emit microwaves and receive reflections from nearby objects. When objects move, the reflected waves return at slightly different frequencies than those emitted due to a phenomenon known as a Doppler effect. Let's talk about that but with tennis balls instead of microwaves. Our guy here is throwing tennis balls at a wall. It should be obvious that the frequency at which he gets hit in the face with the ball will be the same as the frequency at which he throws the ball. But now what happens is the wall starts moving. As the wall moves towards our guy, each ball has a shorter distance to travel than the ball before it, and so impact of the face happens sooner, and just the opposite when the wall is moving away. Let's mute all the sound except for the face impact to see if we can hear the Doppler effect. Can you hear that? Hmm, I can hear that. That's the Doppler effect. So I wired up the radar sensor, got it soldered in, and after a little bit of bench testing, I was ready to install it outside for attempt number two. So I can hear it clicking, so I'm gonna shut it off, hook up some water, and then if we're not close on this one, it doesn't have to work, but it's gotta kinda work, or I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. I expect it to squirt for a couple seconds, then shut off. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there's a little leak right here, that's okay. Man, there's no wires, this is clean. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if it's sensitive enough. Like it triggers when I move but I'm a pretty big bird. You don't want me pooping on your roof. 
you'd be needing a new roof. <laughs> All right, that's cool. I love it. That's so cool. So I need to see if this is sensitive enough to be triggered by a bird. So I got a bag full of wet garbage here, which is pretty much what birds are. So I'm gonna throw this up there and see if I can trigger it. That sucked. Here we go. That should have set it off. So I needed a different sensor. Great, awesome. Also, there was another big problem that had been looming since the beginning of this project that up until now I haven't mentioned. When a bird lands, how am I gonna capture footage of the bird bidet actually working? This is gonna be like a two second event that's gonna happen a couple times a day at most. I don't really wanna just set up a camera and capture hours of footage, so I needed to come up with a solution for that as well. But one at a time. First, the new sensor. I took a metal rod and connected a wire to it. Then it was off to the 3D printer. I printed some brackets and installed the rod into those with a separate wire running over the top of the metal rod. Now if a bird lands on the rod, the wire would touch the rod and create a low voltage circuit. I soldered in some resistors to help prevent cooking a board or a bird, heat shrink some connections and got things hooked up. Oh! It needed a pull down resistor. Next was the camera trigger. This was fairly simple. A solenoid controlled lever to push a button. This is a GoPro and these can be triggered to record when they sense motion, but I just wasn't able to get that working with the slow-mo. So this did the job. And now it was time to take this thing out and see if it worked. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh. <laughs> I forgot that I put a delay in it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that works perfectly. Oh yeah, that will take out a bird. <laughs> Well, that's no birds today, so I'm gonna take it down and we'll try again in the morning. All right, it's the next morning, as you can probably tell from my voice. So, I'm gonna get this put up there and see if we can catch a bird. This is like the sixth time I've cycled it. Still pretty weak sauce. Sure, that's gonna have what it takes to shoot a bird off the roof. This hose that feeds it is super stiff. I think that it's mostly frozen, so it'll just have to warm up today because I'm not taking it down. And if it breaks somehow or it is broken, then it's broken. I'm not gonna fix it. I'm done with this project. It's gonna squirt a bird as it is, or it's just not gonna squirt a bird. Let's see if we get one today. <laughs> Dang it. There's bird seed and berries and apples up there. Who put those up there? That's weird. They're just flying right by that roof. <laughs> None of them want to land on my roof. So I guess my invention works. <laughs>